Anyway, BPC-157 induced the expression of growth hormone receptor in tendon fibroblasts. Typically, when we think of growth hormone, we think of And we are recording perfect. Hi everybody, I'm Damon. Today I want to talk to you guys about BPC-157. The other day I made a video outlining experimental peptide creates risks for athletes. They've since uh, changed the topic at some point from their Google header to experimental peptide prohibited under 2022 rules. I'm assuming that this title was a little bit too controversial because they were unable to find any real risk factors perhaps, but to some degree there is always going to be an inherent risk when you are using a substance that is not well known or not studied very extensively in humans, and with that you can see that obviously with it promoting angiogenesis or the formation of new blood vessels and with the recruitment of fibroblasts to help with cartilage, tendon repair there's always a possibility for negative outcomes to occur. I mean, this could elicit potential cancer risks, vascular uh, degeneration. There, there's really things that we don't know. And by stimulating a couple of these receptors, acting on specific gene factors, you, you could potentially maybe have some risk at un, some undisclosed possible dose, or someone could just have a negative reaction to it. They could get impure chemicals, they could have adulterated chemicals as a result of poor manufacturing practices. It is not FDA approved, it is also not WADA approved, because if you're an athlete, that matters to you. If you're just a recreational bodybuilder or somebody who is looking at this outside of the context of bodybuilding and fitness, but for someone who wants to help help with um, things like longevity, things like your overall health and wellness in terms of recovery or minimizing your exposure to time under duress and stress from this, this may be potentially beneficial for you. So I went ahead really quick and I pulled up a few articles that I felt were relatively interesting for the reasons that I've used it and others have used it. I will link both of these articles in the video description and essentially all it does is it talks about how and why BPC-157 is able to be utilized for tendon issues. And they talk about the mechanism of actions, and essentially what it does is it will induce upregulation of growth factors, it has a pro-angiogenic effect, which is the formation of new blood cells, and the modulation of nitrous oxide synthesis, that is through the, I'm assuming, the pathways that help with the uh, formation of new endothelial cells and smooth cell function. BPC-157 may also be able to control function of the coll collagen fragments that are associated with bone morphogenic proteins. We kind of saw a little bit of that in the video about boron and how it helps with that. I have to excuse Jackson and Abigail. They are a little rowdy. They just got let out. It's about midnight. So when I let them out, they uh, they like to bark at any of the neighbors and they come in feeling kind of rowdy. But anyway, BPC-157 induced the expression of growth hormone receptor in tendon fibroblasts. Typically when we think of growth hormone, we think of anabolic uh, agents, let's get you big. But anabolism isn't just inside of the context of muscle building. Anabolism can happen in practically everything, as can catabolism. So when you see that there is the expression of growth receptor activation inside of tendon fibroblasts, you could essentially help repair tendons a lot quicker. Uh, aside from this, they do have some role in the liver with liver regeneration. I believe that this is um, hepatocarcinoma uh, 33 or... It, I know that it, it, it's used in liver hep, uh, hepatocytes for recovery and growth. Off the top of my head, this name is escaping me, but essentially this is going to help with the entire body's ability to shuttle and promote the creation of new tendons and the uh, circulating blood flow and getting these nutrients back and forward, essentially. So. And it says, to further confirm this result, we treated tendon fibroblasts with PPC-157 at different concentrations. And uh, this is at 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.25, and 0 0.5 micrograms per milliliter. Uh, and we see that the expression of growth hormone receptors found an increase in a dose-dependent manner. So here at the uh, zero day, this is the placebo control. At the 0 0.1, 0 0.25, and then we can notice a marked uh, increase at 0 0.5 micrograms per milliliter. And you can see that there is a very stark change between the two, but when it comes to the 0 0.5 milligrams, you obviously get the most amount of retention recovery, and it may be the most beneficial to use this as it is typically seen to elicit uh, better results overall. Here we see that the tendon fibroblasts at 50 to 60% confluency were treated with BPC-157 concentrations. And it says the expression of growth hormone receptor were measured by uh, real-time PCR Western blot analysis, respectively. 
And then it's a, we have the cell proliferation. We talked about the anabolism and the growth factors going on that. Growth hormone activated uh, JAK2 receptors and tendon fibroblasts. The addition of one uh, microgram or milliliter of growth hormone did activate JAK2 signal pathway and tendon fibroblasts, pre treated with 0.5 milligrams of BPC-157. Longer treatment with BPC-157, the level of phosphorylated but not total amount of JAK2, was found to be higher than stimulation with growth hormone. Okay, so it says growth hormone activated more JAK2 proteins and BPC-157 treated tendon fibroblast. Tendon fibroblasts at 50-60% confluency were pre-treated with BPC-157 concentration of 0.5 micrograms per milliliter for 1-3 to three days. After BPC pre-treatment, 0.1 micrograms of growth hormone was added for 24 hours. And the total JAK2, which was not shown in the activation of JAK2, was determined by the level of phosphorylated JAK2, which were detected by blocks. These were done in triplicates. The level of phosphorylated JAK2 were calculated by direct dice... Uh, densiometric analysis of the blood. The star would be applied if there's a statistically significant difference. So here we can see that on day one, pretreatment with BPC-157 and the growth hormone addition, pretreatment, addition, pretreatment, addition. So we can note that the addition of growth hormone seems to help regulate an even further of the production and the recovery. So this might be something where it is beneficial to stack both growth hormone as well as BPC-127 alongside of it as well. And it says, although the detailed mechanisms are poorly understood, BPC-157 appears to be beneficial in almost all organ systems and many species when very low doses, mostly nanograms per kilograms or micrograms per kilogram range after IPIG and intramucosal local application are used and no side effect or toxicity is found. So here we can see that the effects on gastrointestinal lesions, which is where this uh, originally comes from, is actually your uh, gastric lining in the mucosal layer. The healing effects of BP157 have been reported on the pancreas, liver injuries, endothelium heart damage, and pseudoarthritis. Now, this is the heart damage amelioration is due to the incidences of ischemia being able to be somewhat subverted by the uh, the founded angiogenic properties that it has. We talked a little bit about the ability that it has to repair the liver earlier with the HP33 gene and pseudoarthrosis. That's typically what people tend to use it for, and that is just to help with the uh, arthritis that is caused by the inflammation, and then the, the amelioration of that comes from the formation of new blood cells, encouraging new blood flow to those areas. Healing uh, transected rats Achilles tendons can be accelerated by BPC-157 and even early functional recovery of the tendon to bone after Achilles detachment was found to be promoted by BPC-157. So this is initially what got everybody so into it for injury retention, or <laughs> not to retain your injury, but uh, injury prevention and recovery. So we see here that the tendon fibroblasts were increased, promoting the effect of BPC-157 on growth hormone receptors found to be more significant up to three days after the treatment. And then they hear they just talk about the ways that they did the experiment. They did the Western blood analysis, real-time PCR, and then the statistical analysis, and then the conclusion. This study demonstrated the promoting effect of BPC 157 on tissue healing is potentially associated with the expression of growth hormone receptor intended fibroblasts, also suggesting a different way to promote the tissue healing by increasing the expression of growth hormone to promote the beneficial effects and enhance proliferation. In addition, the amount of growth hormone can be used to theoretically be reduced and the cost of BPC-157 therapy could be much cheaper. And this plays an important role in tendon healing and potential clinical uses in the future. So essentially, if you're using growth hormone for your collagen, for the um, benefits that it may have for your overall body recomposition, if you have an injury, you could stack things like HGH alongside BPC-157 alongside TB-500 to help with some of that. And then here we just have the promoting effect of uh, BPC-157 on the tendon healing, tendon outgrowth, cell migration. I believe this is a little bit more in depth than the other one. We're gonna see if we can go ahead and get this article together. Here is the abstract. Oh, and they actually have the full blown article. It's actually kind of nice. So results, uh, we're just gonna do the results section. This is just more background about the information, uh, staining the fact and yada, yada, yada. So here, we see that we have two groups, ex vivo and uh, outgrowth of tendon explants. To clarify the potential mechanism of BP157 on promoting tendon healing, the initial outgrowth of tendon fibroblasts from tendon explants cultured with or without two micrograms per milliliters of BPC157 was examined and compared. With BPC157, we can see that there is a proliferation of these cells from one group to another. And then it says BPC-157 promoted the cell outgrowth from tendon explants to investigate the outgrowth of tendon fibroblasts from the explants. They used these. Seven days out of EVO, we noted that there was a statistically significant result. 
Gastric DPC 157 is a very water stable, water soluble peptide that is resistant to human gastric acid for at least 24 hours. So, this is also something to note too, because in my video, I talk about my oral ingestion of it and how it helps to attenuate some of the issues that I may have as a result of um, usage of certain stimulants. And it is of note that it can last a while due to its chemical structure. But yeah, essentially, because of its, its structure, it takes a while for it to break down inside of our stomach and we could have it promoting the um, potential benefits inside of our gut health as well. And that's typically why I take it. it it's um, not something I use uh, just for total systemic repair intramuscularly. I don't have any outstanding muscular injuries. I don't have any tendon issues, but I do an oral ingestion about once a week of 100 micrograms just to make sure that I am keeping myself healthy and well in the context of uh, staying well. They do have like capsules of it and tablets I just go through the the actual people in my link in my bio in my link tree. I go through them. I get the peptide. I just reconstitute it, and um, I just use the bacteriostatic water to draw out an accurate 100 micrograms and have that. But other than that, I just thought that it was relatively interesting to riff on the topic a little bit to give you guys a little bit more insight into how and why it works, and potentially see some of the results where you can note that. If you have injury, this may be an appealing option to you. Then again, we don't know much about it other than these studies in animals, and we don't have any real human clinical trials as of yet. So I will go ahead and leave both of these articles in the video description. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them on the video. I would be more than happy to answer them or see what the discussion about these compounds is for. Alongside of that, if you want to ask me a more personal question and you don't feel like commenting on the YouTube, you are more than welcome to send me a DM on Instagram. My Instagram is just at Vegan. It's all one word. Feel free to say, hey, I saw your video on topic XYZ. I want to ask you a couple questions about it whenever you get a minute. I'll be more than happy to help any way I can. But aside from that, I hope that you guys found this entertaining or that you learned something. And until next time, toodles.